Welcome to Small Talk Daily for Friday, May 21st, 2010. This morning we're going to add Ajax to our application. We're going to use Scriptaculous because that's what I used the first time I did this tutorial. You can now use jQuery and roughly speaking the steps to configuring that are the same. You just have to look at the APIs which are obviously a little different. Having said that, to get started what you want to do is open the dispatcher get to your server and you go to config. This is going to be a little different than it was in 2.8 in terms of the steps. You're doing the same thing, it's just the configuration page layouts have changed. So we go to config and we have all the various entry points we can configure. I'm going to pick blog login and we're going to scroll down now to libraries which you see currently has none. And over here, let me shrink this down a little bit so you can see, actually it doesn't resize so I'm going to have to push this over. You can see there's a configure button. I'm going to press that and having pressed that I now have all these libraries that I can load, and you notice that currently none are loaded for my application in this blog login, which is bolded entry point. What I'm going to do is pick out of this list the PT Google library, and further down there's an SU Google library. I'm going to select both of those. I'm going to hit modify up here, and now I'm going to hit this arrow to move them over from available to loaded. Now down at the bottom, which you can't really see, there's an OK button. I'm going to press that and now I'm going to go to blog view and do exactly the same thing. So I'm going to do that and then once I'm finished with that I'm going to scroll all the way down and at the very bottom of this configuration page let me make this obvious there's a save button here that I'm going to hit. So now that I've done both blog login and blog view I'm going to hit save and that's going to take me back out and I have both of those configured. Just to give you an idea of what I want to do, what I need to do here is I want to change these two things so that when I filter I get those as Ajax options. So instead of all of this stuff doing a page submit back and forth and redrawing the whole page, I want to put this into a div and have this stuff updated based on the filter block. So I either get all posts or today's post and have that be an Ajaxified action. So to do that, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here to blog menu UI and I'm going to give it a new instance variable called list component so that when you select one of those menu options it can target the menu, the uh, list component and tell it to update on the fly. So I'm going to also add accessors for that. So I'm going to create accessors for the list component and that's pretty much all I need to do there. What I need to do now is go to the rendering and I'm going to change the way the rendering works. So I'm going to go to render content on and I'm going to have this do two kinds of hrefs. I'm going to have it go through the entries and I'm going to have it render standard links for the new post and the ajaxified links for the other stuff. Now those two methods don't exist so I'm going to get this warning. Don't worry about that. What we're going to do is paste in from this little cheat I've got over here on the right. I'm going to paste in the render Ajax link on. So I'll compile that and explain this. Again, update filter doesn't exist yet. What this is going to do is use the updater on this ID'd object, list ID, which is the thing I'm putting in here. And I'm going to tell it to take the list component and use the update filter based on the thing I selected. And once I've updated the filter, I can then tell the renderer to render that new component. So I have, that's why I have the list component accessible for menu components. So I can tell that thing, re-render yourself now that I've reset the filter. And that's really all there is to that. Now, if we go back to render standard link on, which is going to look an awful lot like the guts of this method used to look like. So there's our entry for the actual href that's going to do a full page submit when we do the new post thing, because we're going to bring in that whole new form. Now we have to finally take this update filter from method and put this into the blog list UI and all it does is check for whether all posts is set and if it is we set the all post filter and if it's not we set today's post filter. Realistically this method could be a little smarter about having a dictionary that it keys off of but for the purpose of this example we're not worried about that we just want to change the filter so you can see what actually happens. And that's really all there is to it. So at this point what we can do is we can go back and launch the browser on this again and see if everything works the way we expect it to. So we'll go to blog view and now we'll hit all posts and you notice that you can't really see it that easily but you should have noticed there was no flash and if we go to today's post since I haven't done anything you notice that empty. So all posts, today's post and if you look down here you can't see anything happening over in the browser so you see that it's just updating that one piece and that's how easy it is to Ajaxify something using Seaside. You just make sure you have the requisite library support loaded using the configuration tools and then you go and change your rendering code so that it uses the updater. If you're using Scriptaculous there's something very similar for jQuery and you just you're off to the races. So it's better for today. Until next time, have fun with Smalltalk.